Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and welcome to another video from our Isra Automation in Playwright with C Sharp.net video series. And in this video, we are going to talk about new locator strategy in Playwright. And this video is almost like a continuation of our last video where we discussed a bit about the ARIA or otherwise called as Accessible Rich Internet Application where we discussed how Playwright does support the ARIA to locate multiple different application in the web application. And that's exactly the same thing that we're going to be discussing in this particular video as well. But we are going to dig even deeper in different controls and how we can extend new locator strategy in Playwright in much greater fashion. Now, if you see the locators page in playwright.net, you will notice that the website itself says that these are the recommended built-in locators available in Playwright, like page.get by role, text, label, placeholder, get by alt text, get by title, and get by test ID. And these itself will almost cover every different scenarios that you need to identify a control. And now that you can see that most of this get by ID, get by name, or get by CSS selector, and all these things are completely gone away because of this new locator strategy. And you may be wondering like, how can I find a control if I don't have any of these controls in place? Well, in those cases, you can actually use what is called as the filter method or you can even granulize your locator as much as possible. But these methods itself are mostly enough to identify almost all the controls that you are looking for. So let's see how we can use them one by one. I'm not gonna go into the details of this particular documentation page. Rather, we can actually get to the application and see how we can actually make use of it. So if you remember in our last video, we actually created a code, something like this, we actually modified our login button using the ARIA link. And then we also modified the username and password. And then we tried executing it and it was working fine as expected. And now, for example, if I want to see within our application, if we really support the ARIA locators itself, so you can just right click and do an inspect in our Google uh, Chrome browser. And then if you go to the Chrome dev tool, and then if you choose accessibility over here, you will notice that it is going to show you if this particular control really has any of the area support. So if I just click this arrow over here, and then if I just drag to this particular text box over here, you will notice that it is going to say that the text box is a username text box. And you can see that it has from label where it is going to show you what is the from label attribute over here. So let me see, you can see that this particular uh, button, this particular text box has a from label for attribute where it is gonna be of username over here. So that's the reason why we could able to identify the username text box using the get by label method. And similarly, you can also notice that to identify a password, we can actually use the get by label. The reason why, because the label name is password. And similarly, you can also notice that if I want to click this particular button control, we actually used what is called as an area role button. And then we just pass the name as login there because that is more than enough to identify this particular control. And now you may wonder like, what if I want to click a control which don't have any area support? So let's say if I just give the admin up here and password and hit enter. And let's say for the employee list over here, we have a search box. And let's say what is the area control for that. You can see that there is a name called as placeholder as search name. So this placeholder that I have, the search name, can also be used as the area component, which because this is exactly what is used for accessibility testing, and that placeholder really shines here to identify the particular control. See, even this can act as a locator to identify this particular control, which is great, right? And now let's say if I wanted to create a new person over here, and I'm sure that these text box over here has got certain IDs or something like that. So if I just go this particular element, you can see that it has an ID of name uh, and name as name, something like that. But I'm not gonna be using the names here, but rather I'm just gonna use actual 
from label as name so we can use the get by label method to actually identify the name text box as well now you may be wondering that this website is so simple and that's the reason why this is working and what about a site which is a bit more complex for example if i wanted to go to a warehouse.co.nz uh, website if i go to the cart of this particular website and then if i try to see if i could able to identify this particular control for the accessibility you can see that there is a area label of quantity as one something like that and let's say if i add a couple more product to the cart let's say add to cart here add to cart here and add to cart here something like this so we have so many different controls here and these are definitely a dynamic control you can see that all these pages also has the accessibility control over here is something but the area attributes are coming up for here for this as well right so there is an area labeled of quantity as one and that is the reason why we can identify this particular control using the label as well but you may have to go and filter out this particular control even more clearer because there are so many different uh, controls with the same name we might need to now go ahead and filter it but we are going to talk about the filtration part later in this particular series but for now you have understood how things are working already so i'm just going to close this and let's say if i wanted to write for our ea employee app so what I'm going to do is this time I'm not really going to get into writing the code like how I did in our last video. Rather, I'm actually going to go to our terminal over here and I'm going to make use of our code generator of Playwright, which is going to help me generate the code itself. So the code generator, as we already discussed in our earlier videos of our video series, it is actually run sitting within our playwright.ps1 of our bin directory within our project so we can just run this particular powershell script and once we execute this it is going to open the browser for me over here as you can see and it is also going to open a recorder or the inspector over here so if i perform any of the action it is going to record all those action over here and most importantly as you can note this time the recorder has also supported what is called as the locator to be displayed in the tooltip like this as you can see it is showing me that it is a get by role of area role of link as login this is exactly what we wrote in our last lecture right and once i click this login it's going to take me to this particular page and if i hover here you will see that it is going to show me that it is a get by label of username and this password is going to be a get by label of password and this particular button is a get by role of area role dot button and it can be identified using its name of login so let me try doing it and this is exactly what we tried performing the action in our last lecture and now see that the employee list is also working and if i want to create a new employee if i just hover there in the create new the identifier is smart enough to tell me that this create new is not really a button rather this is basically a link type so that's why it's going to take you the area role as link and once i click that it's going to go to this particular page and see that it is so cool to actually perform all those action using labels which is great and then i can click the create button so let me try doing that so name adam and salary is ten thousand. worked and the grade and adam at adam.com so this is the thing and then i'm gonna hit the create button over here so once i do that you will see that the adam is going to be added within our code over here see that which is cool i mean it has added two times because i clicked the button two times and there is a bug in this application that's just trying to add it as well but you will realize that whatever that i have performed the action here is all being recorded within our playwright inspector with all the code over here so this code already shows me exactly what it's been displayed in the tooltip so everything is coming up which is quite great so i can just copy this whole thing from here and we can start writing within our new code so i can probably create a new class file and add this code and you can see that the code is going to come up over here so let me try executing this particular code and see how this code actually works So 
So you can see that it is working pretty much as expected. But the next question naturally comes is, what if I wanted to perform a delete operation for the person that I just entered, which is this uh, Adam, which I just created, right? So this is another use case, which almost all the time comes in. So I'm gonna show you that as well. So if I go here to the login and let me do admin. So you can see that we have this Adam user being created. So let me hit this delete button and it is gonna show me this delete page and I can click the delete. And uh, let's say if I want to click this delete because there are two Adams with the same name, how do I really identify which Adam that I wanted to delete? So in order to reduce the complexity a bit, I'm gonna have only one Adam that I'm really creating. And then I want to click this particular row here. So in order to identify this particular row, you will notice that there are not really any names for this particular row available. And there are not any special controls available, locators available to identify this particular benefit, edit or delete button as well. So how do I really click this particular control over here? In order to perform a click for this kind of control, we actually need to do what is called as our chaining of all the locators that we wanted to really do. So that I can do using the code something like this. So I can just go to this particular code over here. And once I click this create button, now I need to identify this particular code, which is page dot get by role. And over here, I'm gonna say area role dot row, because as we know that it is actually a row that we are trying to click there. So I'm gonna choose the row. And then within the row, I need to tell like what row that we are trying to click there. Well, in order for the row to be identified with a specific name, we don't really have any name for this particular row, right? Because this row itself is like a dynamic row. So how do I identify its name? Well, the name, as we know all these days, it's just a text that we are trying to identify. And because if I want to sp identify specifically with a specific test, then probably I can just use the name itself here, which is the Adam. So I can just say name Adam. This is the only thing which I'm gonna give. Let's try how this actually works. And after that, because this is going to be a row that I have to first of all find before I click that particular delete button. And once I found this particular row, I then need to perform one more get by role over here. And here I'm gonna say area role link, which is the delete link that we are trying to click. And then within this delete link, I'm going to say, I'm gonna identify the delete button or the link using the text as delete something like this, right? And once I find that, and then I'm gonna perform a click operation there. That's it. So this is the thing that I'm gonna be doing this time. Actually, even before I do that, I'm gonna take a page dot screenshot async path as uh, probably screenshot dot png uh, and I'm gonna take a full page screenshot. So full page is equal to true, cool. So even before I do that, let me first delete this particular atom because that's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna delete it. And let's see, we don't really have any atom, so which is great. And I'm going to hit this run button to see if that works or not. So you can see that the page is loaded and it is typing it. And I'm sure that it has took a screenshot as well. So if I go to Playwright demo and if I just try to open the directory and there should be a screenshot dot PNG. And you can see that we have a screenshot this time with the Adam in it, which means our code is actually working. So it is clicking the delete uh, link of the particular row and that's the reason why it actually works. So now you can see that we can also do a chaining of our identifier to identify the control and then perform the action. So you can see that the name can just be a partial text as well like Adam and then in order to identify that you can just type Adam there and then you can chain another control something like this and then perform the action. So this way you can easily perform the action in Playwright 
using the new locator strategy which is available within the playwright. 